Ha! Your puny attempts at heroics are of no avail. Do you really think you can stop me? I mean, yeah. Fool! Huh. You must think very highly of yourself to think you can stop me. Right now, your friends are slowly falling into death's firm grip. Join me. Together we can rule the ah! Wait, was that, was that it? Wait, hang, hang on. It's me, Shemp, always letting you know if you should shelve it or trash it. Now, as you can see, I've moved into a new place, much bigger actually, which means I can do things like this, this, uh, $2,000 well spent. So I started thinking about how it's been a while since I've done a Sonic video. I mean, Sonic was my big thing back in the day. So I started looking over my Sonic shelf and came to the realization, I don't want to play any of these. Okay, I should specify that most of the games are booked for collabs, so I can't do them now. Other games that I really enjoy, I've already covered on the channel. I was kind of stuck, but then one of them finally stood out to me. Not because of a shiny cover or anything, Sonic Lost World. I don't remember anything about my time with this game, even though I have a big history with it. See, back in 2011, when I was 13 years old or so in 7th grade, if I recall correctly, we had a program called Channel One that was produced for middle school which showed off news and stories by other kids. It was professionally put together and had a lot of charm to it, and I remember that the only commercial that they would show was the one for Sonic Generations. Every time it came on, my eyes were glued. The game was a huge deal for Sonic fans, honestly. The biggest complaint about about Sonic Unleashed was the Werehog, but everyone loved the daytime stages. Right after that, we got Sonic Colors, which was nothing but daytime stages. But it had its own drawbacks that we'll get into in another video. Generations followed perfecting the formula. Not only were we seeing remixed versions of older stages, we'd have two versions, a 3D and a 2D version. It was insane! So after Generations, we hit a bit of a two-year dry spell in terms of mainline Sonic. We had some pretty heavy hitters like Sonic Transformed, Mario and Sonic, this thing. Then in August 2013, Nintendo of all companies dropped the trailer for Sonic Lost World, the new mainline Sonic game. It was kind of exciting because everyone wanted to know where they would go from Generations. Improved boost gameplay? More stages? More originality? Well, Sonic isn't boosting, okay, that's weird, but we have a plethora of new moves, classic running animation, new level gimmicks, faster homing attack, wait, wall running? This bitch is doing parkour! Wait, who are these assholes? The levels are tubular? Listen, it was a lot to take in, and you bet your ass I was breaking down every scene that was shown to understand what the fuck was going on? I think the biggest surprise was at the end when it was announced that it was exclusive to Nintendo and came out two months after it was announced. Christ, guys. Generations came out seven months after it was announced. Why was this game so quick? I was in high school when the game was announced and released. I bought a Wii U for this game. Guys, I was committed. I even got the Deadly Six bonus edition. I don't even remember what it came with, but the cover's holographic, so... That's neat. So I played the game, I guess. I honestly don't remember the game. I just remember the build up to the game. Now is a good time as any to actually play through it consciously. No bias, no nothing, because I legitimately do not remember it. Basically another blind run. I should specify that I did record a good chunk of the game from my Wii U, but for some reason the Elgato would only capture it through an HDMI splitter, and even then it only sometimes worked. So I recorded the rest of the game on the PC version that was released in 2015. So if some chunks look better, that's why. Starting the game up greets us with a... Drop the critters, Eggman! Well, daggum there, what the hell you think you're doing, my cattle there, Eggman? You better go on get you some, bitch, come on, get it! So Eggman pops their plane with the Glock and they go spiraling down. We see this hexagon, he hexagon, hexagon, he hex, fuck, this thing that Tails calls the Lost Hex. How does he know what it is? Shut the fuck up. Then right away we're introduced to the Deadly Six, this game's antagonists. They're a group of Zeti that all have extremely unique personalities that surpassed even the greatest Shakespearean plays. Eggman has this 
thing that acts as a dog whistle to them or something so he can control them, which is why they're attacking Sonic. It's weird, the story just feels like nothing happens, even though a lot of things happen. I never feel like there are any stakes. See, Eggman has this machine that's going to suck the planet dry so he can be evil. The Zeddy are under his control because of the dog whistle. I can see the game trying to do character development for Sonic though. At one point he kicks away the whistle thing and the Zeddy start controlling Eggman's robots. What the writers are trying to do is make Sonic less of an asshole by having everyone call him out for his bullshit. What it ends up doing is making him look like more of an asshole because he never takes full responsibility. After the Zeddy take control, Sonic and Tails are forced to team up with Eggman because only he can shut down the machine. I guess. So now that the Zeddy aren't being forced to continue with Eggman's plans, they decide to... continue with Eggman's plans. Ah, dude! Yeah, bitch! What the fuck? What you gonna do now, I'm huh? I'm fucking hurt! What the hell? Can't do anything when I'm around, huh? Ah! What you gonna do? Ooh, ooh, what you gonna do better? Ooh, bitch! What you gonna do? Nothing! <laughs> Got your ass! Holy shit! I saved you. You're free to do as you please. Nice, man! Thanks! Fuck you. I claim I want to. Bitch. From here on, things get more infuriating. See, as the story progresses, we get introduced to all of the Deadly Six. Let me introduce you to them by how the game portrays their very complex personalities. <clears throat> we have sad, fat, uh, crazy, girl, uh, we have old, uh, and then there's boss. They all have names, but I can't be fucked to remember any of them with how one note they are. Every interaction with these guys is so hard to sit through. Fat is fat because haha <laughs> food, old is wise because he's short and old, girl is girl, boss sounds mean, and sad is ha <laughs> quirky random relatable. All while this is going on, Sonic is just... Talking. He never says anything of importance. Christ, Amy and Knuckles legitimately die after life gets sucked off their planet, and Sonic's just running around like there's nothing wrong. The only time Sonic is really challenged is when Tails calls him out for being a dick, and the reason for the argument is so painful to sit through with how stale the writing is. I honestly don't know what the writers were thinking. I can't do this anymore. What are you talking about? I can't. We're losing money. These stupid writing jobs no, no, aren't they going are. Anywhere. This one's gonna be the one. Writing for a Sonic game is. Come on, it's gonna work. <sighs> hang on. Don't hang up. It's them or me. Don't do this. I won't sit through this anymore. <sighs> yes, sir. Yes, everything's going great. The script should be done soon. Sonic talks more, oh no, Eggman was bad the whole time. They spit out the life juice back into the world, and that's it. So, where through the grapevine is when the script was sent overseas, the Japanese team was so embarrassed by the script that they changed basically all of the dialogue and the tone for the game. It's like a night and day difference. Sonic goes from being a constant asshole to a guy who fucks up sometimes and takes responsibility. It's absolutely crazy how different it is. Alright, we gonna go or what, Tails? Hmm. I've built a TV out of paper clips. Yeah. And reprogrammed a supercomputer using dishwashing detergent and a toothpick. I know. So look, fixing a propeller on a biplane? That's about as difficult as taking a nap. Okay, I didn't need your whole life story. A simple good to go would have been cool. All right. Good to go! いいままでに比べれば楽勝だよ。ああ、この前も爪楊枝 1 
All right, enough about the awful story. Let's get into the gameplay, the part I was most interested in. With the complete lack of a boost button, I have to shift my playstyle. I remember in interviews with the team that they talked about how they were responding to criticism with the controls in other Sonic games. They said people were complaining about how hard it was to control Sonic when he was going that fast, so they gave him a run button. Yeah, in order to get any speed at all, you have to hold the right trigger. Without pushing the trigger, this is the best you're gonna get. It's kind of ironic because with this mentality in mind, it's still kind of hard to control Sonic, if not harder. With the button being held, he does speed up, but Sonic doesn't like to go diagonally. It's either hard left or hard right. There's really no flow with the movement speed, which isn't a big deal because the game's main gimmick is that the levels are all big straight tubes. Now, I don't hate the idea of that. I really appreciate them thinking outside the box. It's interesting to see something like this done in a Sonic game. Usually, the way Sonic level design works is that you have the fast route up top and the slow route on bottom. This makes it to where if all you're doing is holding right, then you go to the slower route. If you can time your jumps well and go up, then you're rewarded with more goodies and a faster route. Lost World takes this approach, but applies it to the other side of the level. It does add more replayability so you can explore all the different routes each level has to offer. Now, each route does showcase more of Sonic's new moves. One of the main ones that was advertised for the game was the parkour system. Now, if Sonic runs at a wall with the run button held down, he'll begin to run up it. You'll find multiple sections where you'll be hopping off two walls to run across a big gap. It's a really neat concept in theory to keep the momentum going. The problem is that the game doesn't really explain how the mechanic fully works. All the game tells you is what I just told you. There are mechanics hidden inside of the parkour system. You just have to die a few times by experimenting just so you know what what works and what doesn't. Overall, it's a neat idea, but it does get in the way a lot. In a Sonic game, you know, I want to go fast, so I'm constantly holding down the run button to speed up. So whenever I'm doing some basic platforming, Sonic will automatically start running up the small steps, which breaks the flow. And that seems to be a running theme with this game. Flow just gets thrown out the window. What was already a simple system now turns into a waiting game with the homing attack. Before, you just press the jump button again when you see an enemy, and then you press it again when you see another one. Apparently, that's too hard for people, so now Sonic has a multi-lock homing attack, meaning if you have multiple enemies, you'll see multiple lock-on reticles. Then you do the homing attack, and he'll attack all of them at once. It's neat to watch, but I don't understand why I have to completely stop my progress just to wait for the reticle to show. I think stopping your progress should be a selling point on the back of the box, because holy Christ, they really love stopping your progress. It seems like every few steps they take forward, they take a mile hike back. Like, the presentation is great. Solid frame rate, bright and pretty graphics, and amazing music. I think this is some of the greatest music in the series, hands down. I love the level themes that accompany the music, but come on, man. It's so weird. The game starts out really well with the first level. It perfectly illustrates how the game is going to be played, up until a certain point. At first I was like, ah oh, man, I took the slow route. The, the really slow route. I bet there's a faster route somewhere else. There isn't. If you thought this was a slow, small part of a level, well, don't worry, because there's an entire level with that in mind. In this level, you have to very slowly guide these giant fruits to a big fan and go to the next area. That's it. There's no speed. It's just this. Then, there's the snowball level, where you turn into a Katamari ball and, you guessed it, very slowly move around. You even have to do a fucking boss fight as this thing. If that wasn't slow enough, don't worry, because there's an auto-scroller in a Sonic game. I just want to go fast, please! It's funny, because the fastest part of this game are the boss fights. I'm not even joking. Watch this. That's how all of them go. 
Oh, sorry, I forgot. There's another function of the homing attack that the game didn't explain. So, basically, only on some enemies, you can let the homing attack charge up to do more damage. So, every boss encounter is a one-shot, essentially. The main thing this game has going for it is how classic it feels. It's got modern Sonic, but all of the levels have something relating to an older Sonic game, and god damn it, that brings so much charm. Like, the flowers in the old Sonic games are turned into buzzsaws now. That's really neat, they definitely had some really good ideas, but the actual game itself doesn't feel like Sonic. When the main drive of Sonic is keeping the momentum, Lost World fails at that because there is no momentum. It feels like it shouldn't have been a Sonic game. If this was another IP with the same creative minds on it, I think it would have been fine. Or if it was Tails instead, then that would have also helped because I don't expect to go fast with Sonic's friends. Sonic is the fast one, so having a slower character tackle these levels probably would have been better. I can just feel Lost World trying to be a game that it just isn't. Overall, I think the main things holding it back is the awful writing and the level design. I got used to the controls, but that doesn't excuse them for being so slow. Don't even get me started on the 3DS version. That's a whole video for another time. Ah, uh, so what should you do? Shelve it or trash it? Well, Eh, like, okay, fundamentally the game is bad, but presentation-wise, it's actually really good. I love the music and the aesthetics, but that's it. The gameplay is neat, but forgettable. The writing is the absolute worst part of the game, and I really don't see a reason to come back to this. So, shiny cover aside, Sonic Lost World gets trashed.